Okay, so we're now going to look at the final uh, Jackie K poem, um, which is going to be Keeping Orchids. Uh, this is the final poem that I'm going to look at in terms of this text, just because uh, for your SQA, um, if you're doing the SQA English exam, either Nat 5 or higher, these are the only six that you need to know. Uh, obviously, Jackie K has other poems besides these, uh, but uh, for the purposes of helping students to revise, I'm just going to look at these six. Okay, so we're going to look at keeping keeping orchids, like I said, and um, yes, okay, uh, where's the thing gone? Yeah, good, all right, okay, keeping orchids, here we go, all right, so uh, this is another, like I said, of Jackie Kay's sort of like I said, pain poems or poems which describe loss or suffering. Poems which have a sort of tra tragic kind of uh, theme to them, a tragic feel to them. Uh, not happy poems, basically, okay? So um, this poem here sort of talks about how um, either Jackie Kay's, not Jackie Kay, the speaker again, we separate this poet from the speaker. It talks about how the, the poet, the, the speaker's uh, mother is dying, is going to die or is unwell in some kind of way. And the speaker basically is um, reflecting on how the flowers her mother gave to her, um, how they themselves sort of like wear down and die. And that's like sort of like a metaphor for her mother. Okay. Now it's unclear at the end of the poem if her mother gets better or if she actually passes away at the end of the poem. Again, it's not exactly clear because the, the, the language at the end is ambiguous in that way. Um, but in any case, this is what it's about. Okay, it's about basically the mother being sort of either unwell in some kind of way or dying in some kind of way. Okay. All right, so we begin. We begin. The orchids my mother gave to me. Orchids are flowers, are the ones that I have on this presentation, you can see. My mother gave to me when we were for, when we first met are still alive twelve days later. Okay, so the speaker and her mother met at some point, um, and her mother gave her some flowers. Okay, although the although some of the buds remain closed as secrets, twice since I carried them back like a baby in a shawl from her train station to mine, then home. Okay, so um. Maybe what's happening at this point is that the speaker is basically taking the flowers her mom gave to her, and every time she goes to visit her mom, she takes the flowers along with her. Um, anyway, what this is setting up is the the idea of the flower, the flowers being central, the orchids being central to the poem, and it's basically setting them up as something for us, the reader, to pay attention to, and to see as like sort of like a central symbol. Okay. So, and also what's being set up in this in these lines here is the closeness between the mother and the speaker and also the idea of the buds remain closed secrets it's setting up the idea that the mother has secrets things that she hasn't shared with the speaker and that the orchids the flowers are going to be seen as a representation of the mother or the mother's life okay it's all of those things um at the beginning in these lines okay twice since then the whole glass carafe or caraf I'm not exactly how should, sure how to pronounce it. I think it's carafe. It's a glass vase, basically, or vase. Glass vase. The thing you put flowers in, a, a glass version of the thing you put flowers in. You can also drink out of it. Um, but anyway, she's put her flowers in, in this glass carafe. <laughs> glass thing. Vase. Has crashed, falling over, unprovoked, soaking my chest of drawers. All the bro broken wars. So the thing the flowers have been held in, Thing the flowers have been held in has smashed, has broken. Um, setting up the reader, foreshadowing, if you like, the idea that something is about to happen, which is going to be something related to uh, destruction or things being broken, something being broken. Obviously, in this case, it's going to be something to do with the mother and her health being broken, damaged in some kind of way. You see, the flowers have fallen out of this broken thing, damaged thing, the flowers have um, have been damaged in some way, and now she's picking them up and putting them, trying to put them back together again, and she says troubled hands, which is going to be um, 
carried on forward when she starts to talk about her mother and how she's basically trying to be there for her mother, heal her mother, put her mother back together again, you know, as best she can in terms of her, her health. And again, the idea of hands is going to be mentioned. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see here, my mother's hands are all I have. See that? So, um, even after that, the closed one did not open out. The skin shut like an eye in the dark. The closed led the flowers. And um, maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe what this is talking about is that the mother has known that she's dying, that she's she's getting sick, she's getting ill, but she doesn't talk about it. She hasn't shared that explicitly with the speaker. And so just like the flowers have been closed and, and shut, um, but troubled, okay, falling over and slightly damaged, but not open. Um, her mother is like that. Huh? Her mother is slowly dying, being damaged, unwell, uh, but she's not open about it. She's not talking about it. Okay. Um, Twelve days later, my mother's hands are all I have. It's a strange way of saying things. Her voice is fading fast, but what basically maybe what she's saying is, even her voice rushes through a tunnel the other way from even her voice rushes through a tunnel the other way from home. So maybe what she's saying is that her mother is losing her ability to speak. So she can't speak anymore. And so she can only like press her hand, you know, to let her know that she's still conscious or that she's still there. Her voice rushes through a tunnel the other way from home. When she tries to speak, it's like trying to hear someone on the other side of a tunnel. It's like the noise is, you can't really hear it properly. The, the words are not, communicated um, properly, effectively because of her poor health, something like that. It's like also the idea of distance in that her mother is slowly fading away. It's like almost that she's she's on the other side of a tunnel and she's trying to talk to her, but it's like this distance between them where they can't talk. Sort of like McKeague and Aunt Julia, distance between them, or sorry, McKeague and then visiting her. A distance of pain that cannot be crossed. Also, here you see um, what I'm noticing is the mention of the voice again. This is something which is seems to be a common theme or idea in Kay's poems, which is the idea of losing your voice or something happening to your voice where you can't talk properly. We see this in um, we see this in old tongue with her words falling out of her mouth with the accent idea, losing her ability to speak, communicate. And we see this in uh, the poem that I just covered uh, while Layla while Layla sleeps, um, with her describing her voice has become like a house with with no roof on it. Um, so this idea of the voice being uh, affected negatively, being damaged in some kind of way, not being able to express herself or someone in the poem not being able to express themselves, seem to be like a common theme which runs through her her poetry. Something just to take note of and think about. Okay, I close I close my eyes and I try to remember exactly a paisley patterned scarf, a brooch, a navy coat, a digital watch her daughter was wearing when she died. Um so who is it she's she's thinking about? Who is she thinking about? Uh maybe her mum was wearing these these things that she's describing, paisley pattern scarf and brooch and navy coat and so on. Uh paisley pattern is like the pattern which I've got in that picture there it, it's like the <laughs> it's like the the bloods and crips <laughs> um it's close to like the teardrop looking thing i like the bandana you can double check it but i think that's what it's close to like that i see them like little swirly things the mom's not wearing a bandana obviously but she's wearing a scarf with that kind of pattern on it uh paisley also is a place in scotland uh close to glasgow um um, some people might consider it to be inside Glasgow. Anyway, the point is, it's somewhere in Scotland, so it could be an illusion, or it could be a little hint, maybe from where her where, about where her mother's from, the speaker's mother. That is, uh, I don't know. Okay, now, uh, interesting statement. Digital watch her daughter was wearing when she died. Okay, who died? The mother died or the daughter died? It's ambiguous again, on purpose, I believe. Um, but anyway, the point is, it's a mention of death. And the mention of loss. So either the mother has lost someone in the past, or like the speaker's sister, or the mother herself at this point has died, 
and um yes she's gone uh interesting if it is the first one that's about the speaker sister that she mentions her daughter had died as opposed to saying my sister had died i'm not exactly sure why she does that <clears throat> excuse me but the main point is that someone has died okay and uh we can maybe just assume it's it's either it's it's most likely probably going to be the mother we can we can we can assume that okay now they hang their heads and suddenly grow old the proof of meeting who hangs whose heads and grows old maybe the flowers hang their heads meaning they're starting to like droop over they're not uh, standing tall in their in their stems anymore, but they're starting to now sort of fold over. Again, but that would be that would seem to fit with the idea that the mother and the flowers are like uh, tied. Huh? The flowers are a symbol of the mother or a uh, symbol of the mother, and so the flowers dying or you know not being healthy anymore would reflect the mother dying. That would seem to fit. Okay. Okay, still her hands, awkward and hard to fold and unfold a green carrier bag as she tells the story of her life, which again now confuses us because this comes after the mention that someone has died. So maybe it wasn't the mother that died, but maybe it is the speaker's sister or the mother had a different daughter from a different family, so it's a speak speaker's stepsister or something. I'm not sure, huh? but someone died before, I'm not sure. Still her hands, awkward and hard to fold and unfold, so her hands have become damaged. Maybe she's elderly now, and she can't open them and close them as well as she used to be able to. A carrier bag, hard to fold and unfold, and then she also can't use them, well, even to open up a, a simple thing like carrier bags. She's lost her strength. She tells the story of her life, compressed, airtight. Again, mentioning ideas that the mother of the speaker has a lot of speak... The mother has a lot of secrets, a lot of things about her life which she doesn't share, which she doesn't tell to the speaker. She keeps tight like the buds of the flower. A sad square, then a crumpled shape, meaning she's putting the carrier bag into these shapes. A bag of tricks, her secret life, a hidden album, a box of love letters. A bag of tricks, maybe, depending on how you read it, could be Things she would say so as not to tell the truth about her life, to avoid talking about it. Or, if you want to be, make it more positive, things she would say which amaze the speaker, which the speaker is uh, sees as like um, uh, amazing, like in a good way, right? Telling her stories about her life which she feels um, surprised about but also good about. It seems with the, the tone of the poem, it might be leaning to the first one, which is that the mother has, the speaker is seeing that her mother is good at, you know, saying things in a way which covers the truth up, or she can say things in a way which means she's able to keep secrets and not reveal the truth. Her secret life, a hidden album, a box of love letters, again, following on from the um, things we just said. A door opens and closes, time is waiting, time is outside waiting. So maybe she's now left her mother's house. I'm not sure. Time is outside waiting. Um, it's a good sort of personification here. Um, in that maybe at this point her mother has, maybe at this point her mother has died, and she realizes that she has to still live. She has to move on, uh, because time, her own time is is on it. Her own time is waiting for her. And her own time is is running. Huh? It's 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 still going. I catch the draft in my winter room. Okay, again, maybe this is so. Winter has always been a classic symbol of death. Draft is cold air, also related to death. Airlocks keep the cold air out, so she uh, can lock her house or lock the windows and so on. Boiling waters make flowers live longer. Um, both of these maybe now we can see is that. The mother has died, and the flowers are dying, if not dead, or mostly dying. But the speaker herself still has life, and she is now going to try and preserve the flowers for as long as she can, even though maybe they're mostly dead, or maybe they're dead already, but in terms of sort of trying to keep her mother's memory alive, um, she's going to try and preserve the flowers, okay, doing this by 
boiling them or or something. I don't. I'm not a florist. Yeah, I don't understand this. But doing things with water and also cutting the stems with a sharp knife, which would, in itself, seem like that's the way that you kill a flower. But it could be sort of an idea that her mother's life has been cut, meaning she's no longer here. She's passed on, and she's gonna cut the flowers. To keep them alive, yeah, it's almost like an ironic, um, an ironic contrast or something, an inversion or something like that at the end of the at the end of the poem. So all throughout the poem, everything that happened to the mother happened to the flowers, and had the same effect. At the end of the poem, the thing that happened to her mother, the speaker does to the flowers. In other words, the mother's life was cut. The speaker cuts the flowers. The effect on the mother was she died and she's no longer around. The effect on the flowers is it's going to keep them alive for longer. But actually, I just noticed um, it has the same effect overall, big effect. The mother's memory is kept alive with the speaker. So she keeps her alive through the, with the speaker, with the with the poem and her words and her memories and everything. And when the mother's, when the mother's life is cut, the speaker keeps her alive. She's telling us about her, so she keeps her alive. And when she cuts the flowers, she also keeps them alive. So they actually both have the same effect. Okay, the flowers also themselves are a memory of the mother. It's it's a symbol of the mother. So as long as the flowers are around, even if maybe they're in a book somewhere, pressed or something, still they are a memory of the mother. Which means as long as the flowers are around, alive in some sense, the mother is also around and alive in some sense. <clears throat> excuse me okay good so in terms of the key themes in this poem loss would be big sadness big death obviously it would be big and um, the key to understanding this poem is again just try and think about those you know the symbol of the flowers and sort of being like her mother and um, and you should you should get it yeah okay if you have any questions you can put them below uh, that's all the Jackie K poems so I've now covered all of them and um, I'm going to work through the rest of the texts from the list in Scottish texts. So my goal is to have all of them on the channel, okay, every single one of them. And then um, after that, I'm going to start addressing, my goal is to address every major text in the English literature canon, and even texts which are not technically English literature, like ancient literature, like things like... Um, the Odyssey or Homer's Iliad, things like that. Yeah, classic texts, which I think people would benefit from, from, uh, you know, learning and understanding. Um, and so I'm going to lecture on all of those. Um, if you have any questions below, otherwise, uh, take care, yeah.